So the markets have been fairly volatile over the last month, month and a half. You know, ever since the budget, there have been uh, there has been this sort of fear in the markets that the markets could you know correct. The markets are down eight ten percent uh, already, and there are two big concerns that are troubling investors. One, uh, that the Indian economic growth is slumping, uh, and second. That the global economy is also weakening, and the threat of a full-blown trade war between U.S. and China, uh, which could actually trigger a sort of a global recession. Now, let's take a step back and look at these concerns. Yes, Indian economic growth seems to be the weakest we've seen in nearly a decade. Uh, there's a major slowdown in major parts of the economy: autos, banking, NBFC, real estate. Now, all this in the backdrop of rural incomes, which are already weak. Now these are major sectors which have a multiplier impact on the economy. Uh, multiple reasons why this slowdown seems to have happened. Uh, you know you can't exactly pinpoint, but I think, and I won't spend too much time discussing economics here. But you know, a couple of well-known reasons. One, of course, is that NBFC started cutting back lending last year, which had a major impact on small businesses and also consumption. The other is that the government spending also didn't grow as tax collections were significantly short of target last year. Uh, this was really led by GST. Uh, the other issues like tax on FPIs or foreign portfolio investors or super rich tax, I think, are more sentiment dampeners than the real reason to sell, or you know, the real, real reason that the sell-off happened in equities. Uh, now, the slowdown also means that profit growth for Indian companies remains elusive. Uh, the consensus few months back in March, April, was that profits for the Nifty companies would grow about 20% this year. We're already seeing forecasts being cut now to the range of 12 to 13%. The way the slowdown is unfolding, it could actually end up being in single digits. The other big reason for increased risk aversion is now more global, uh, which is the heightened trade tensions between the US and China. Uh, this trade war, if it actually escalates, can have major ramifications for the global economy. China is the single biggest part of the US supply chain, and any uncertainty on tariffs will cause businesses to pull back fresh investments. Not good. But what's the real possibility of a full-blown trade war? My view is that rhetoric aside, chances are very, very low. Trump faces re-election next year, and he wouldn't want to jeopardize his re-election chances with a weak U.S. economy. Uh, so, but he has to play to his audiences, and therefore, you know, you'll hear these noises and you know some action here and there. So the real question we face as investors are: How long will this last? Can the markets fall further from here, and by how much? Is there anything or something that we should do given the situation? Let's consider these. I think barring any meaningful government intervention, our view is that slowdown could possibly persist for another 9 to 12 months easily. Can the markets fall from here? You know, in a really bad scenario, the Nifty could actually drift down another 5 to 10 percent over the next 12 months. But there's one catch. Pessimism seems to be the consensus view right now. And in the 25 years that I've been active in the markets, I have rarely ever seen the market move in the same direction when there is near unanimous consensus. Right now, everyone in the media only seems to be talking gloom. Headlines like today, you know, where car sales crashed 40% last month. This, of course, is a wholesale number, not primary sales. Uh, but there's a significant chance that this negative outlook is already in the price or in the stock markets, priced it into the stock markets. Any surprises could only potentially be to the upside. The other is that let's say markets do actually drift down 5-10% from here. One option is that you know, maybe we can reduce exposure to equity mutual funds. Uh, any attempt to time the market is fraught with risk, as we have seen. An investor would not only need to sell now, but also buy back the market near the bottom. So let's understand the impact of this, you know, whole process. So on average, most client portfolios are 70% linked to the market day to day that we've seen. In fact, clients in the wealth plus portfolio only have 40% linked uh, to equity mutual funds, which are in turn linked to day-to-day -day markets. So to capture a 5-10% fall perfectly, meaning selling today and buying at the bottom would mean an overall portfolio impact or savings of 3-5% to only. That is also if we are able to execute perfectly, which we know is humanly near impossible. And if we fail to execute perfectly, the whole exercise would be in vain and would end up actually costing us. This reminds me actually, actually of the market situation in 2002 where the economy was in a very poor situation. Several industries were struggling and we had a huge NPA problem in the banking sector. But we all know that 2003 marked the beginning of one of the biggest bull runs in the history of Indian markets. You know, I know people who exited the markets at the Sensex level of 3,500 odd, saw the markets go down 20%, didn't buy, 
market started coming back came back they kept waiting were unsure eventually ended up entering the markets at four and a half to five thousand a year or two later not a happy situation we wouldn't want to do that to save at best a three four percent on the portfolio we are in equities to enjoy the long-term rewards that come from patient investing just to refresh our memories here are charts that we shared with you during the financial strategy presentation these are rolling returns for holding periods of one year five years ten years as you can see economic and market cycles are routine and will continue to record for our clients we are working with 10 years and longer strategies in the context of this time frame it simply doesn't make sense to try and time this correction the india story isn't over there's been a blip not the first nor will it be the last nor are we sitting on the peak of a massive bull market which has gone up three four times in five years in those situations an exit call would be more structural and appropriate this is not such a situation in fact when the markets do come back eventually demand does come back we've had a situation where for the last 10 years we haven't had any capex and therefore when demand does come back you could see a significant growth or you know a profit growth cycle which could mirror somewhat what we've seen in the 2003 2007 cycle now we know it's a difficult environment today but having weighed the odds we would choose to remain invested and continue to invest as usual you know as a parting point for those clients that don't have a plan b in their portfolio in place through structured products uh, and you know not just structured products but to the extent of 30 40 percent of their portfolios this is the time to review it once again structured products have been the perfect antidote to such markets thank you